Hello everyone and welcome to Travel Explore Celebrate Life. We are Neil and Sunila as always. And you know, this time we thought that let's let's talk of how to pack for a trip because very often we reach our destination, we reach our, our holiday and we realize we've forgotten something or you know, you expect it to be summer. And this has happened to me many times. Like I've thought this is summer, I'm in June, this is June, I'm in the US. I'm not going to need any winter wear. You reach there and you realize that the weather is unpredictable and suddenly it is very cold and you are not equipped. So I thought let's let's do a session where we can talk about what are the things that you must take on tour and what is the best way to pack for our holidays. Hi Neil, how are you? Hi, how's it going? Well, I think it's an app topic now that borders are opening and you know, it just feels like every time you are at the baggage claim at an airport waiting for your bag, you often get to see what type of a traveler the person standing next to you would be because like on the basis of what you choose as your travel bag, whether it's for one day or 15 days, it just like, it's going to make or break your trip, right? That's right, Neil. And you know, nowadays the luggage, um, there are a lot of restrictions on what kind of luggage you can carry, how many pieces of bags you can carry. So the airlines, of course, within India domestic, they say not more than 15 kilos. Internationally, every airline has their own rules. If you're going long haul to the US, there are different rules. If you're going to Europe, there are different rules. Um, so yeah, and, and the other thing is other than the airline rules, you want to be comfortable too, because if you're lugging too much luggage around, I think you, you don't enjoy the holiday as much. Like sometimes, you know, when, in, when you're in Europe and you're, if you're traveling by train, for example, or even if you're in a van tour or a coach, like even if it's a Mercedes van, there is a limit to how much luggage is allowed per person. In fact, a lot of trains in Europe now limit you to one bag per person because there isn't so much space. So we want a good holiday. We want to look good on a holiday, but we want to pack everything into and keep it light, keep it happy and enjoy our holiday. So I think Neil, let's, let's start with, because the most important thing here is what kind of luggage should we have? What kind of luggage should we take? Because it's an investment, right? Like well, the luggage we have, luggage we take. So how do we buy luggage or how many different types of luggage do you think we need? So, you know, um, I think a good point, like I always keep telling everyone is that luggage comes in things that have wheels, ha don't have wheels. Back in the day, we used to have like, you know, when the two wheel concept became popular, you had mm -hmm. to still like move your bag around and the weight of the bag was still like, you know, on your like hand or arm. So I think when you look at luggage, my suggestion often goes that get something that has wheels and whether it's that massive bag, whether it's the small cabin bag, just get it with wheels and four wheels and not two. Because if you have two wheels, you still are going to get tired moving around that thing. So I feel when you look at luggage, I, 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 my rules are if, if you're going for some, a trip that is less than four days, you don't check in a bag. Like it's as simple as that because the moment you check in a bag, that means I, I feel that I've taken more stuff than I need. And I've often seen people check in two bags for a four day trip. And that need not be the case because you want to travel light. So I think I should counter question you and be like, okay, what, what is your go-to bag when, when, you know, when you are traveling? Neil, honestly, I'm really more comfortable when I check in a bag, but I think you're right. If it's a short trip, then you don't really need a big bag. And with a small cabin baggage, you can easily complete the trip. What I generally tend to do is really, I've over the years now, after all those years of traveling, I've settled with a medium-sized bag. I did have a huge suitcase earlier because I always needed space. You know, wherever I go, I will shop something that's local. I will definitely buy something from that area, just a souvenir. And sometimes that souvenir can be really big or it could be like, if it's the US, then there's a lot of shopping. You can come back with clothes and other things. So you often need luggage space, but... I found that I don't really need a very big bag for that. I don't need the largest size that is available. Like typically uh, suitcases come in three sizes. You have the cabin baggage, then you have a medium size, and then you have the largest size for a uh, long haul destination. I think, I think the large size is only for the United States. Whenever you're going to America, you need that bag because you're going to shop a lot. Correct. 
otherwise a medium size bag kind of fits everywhere and uh, you know you get a lot of those uh, duffel bags which can be folded so you can just throw one of those in and if in case you have more luggage then while coming back you always have an empty bag to fill in and that kind of suits the purpose really well so definitely four wheels definitely um, you know 100% and i think it's really important to invest in a good bag because most of these good brands come with international warranties you don't know how your luggage is going to be handled at the airport in case there is a damage to your bag but you have an international uh, warranty then it can be uh, changed repaired and even replaced wherever you are in the world and i think that is a big plus so let me ask you this question like do you prefer the hard cover or the soft cover bag i always take a hard cover why is that like what what makes you because neil i used to have a soft cover earlier but i found that you know they they i think they kind of stack the luggage one on top of the other and the ones with the soft cover often get squished so whatever's inside and when if you're traveling for business or otherwise it really messes up everything inside also sometimes it's raining so they can't always protect the bags the way um, you know they're not always covered so sometimes the bags do come out on the baggage belt and the soft ones are soaking wet but the hard cover at least the rain water has not damaged anything inside so for me i find a hard cover really easy to travel with you know i used to be a strong advocate for soft cover bags just because the hard cover bag sometimes gets scratches and then the scratches don't look good on the bag but then i did have two experiences where my bag came out on the baggage carousel and it was wet and i was like okay it's time to move to the hard cover bag you can always take the wrapping on the airports that is available you know but you know the but you know the the, the, but the, 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 uh, the wrapping really you think that no but i'm saying if you're worried about the baggage being scratched getting scratches then the easiest way is to go and use a baggage wrap and avoid but come on that. we've seen we've seen videos of like airport handlers just tossing bags as if like you know they've just not had their coffee and then are just tossing bags because okay well and then i just often wonder that hey like you know if i'm if i'm going somewhere i'll probably i probably may have bought some glasses or something that is super fragile yeah. and that can just crack but i've never had that experience uh, so there there is one tip there and you must always 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 request them to put the fragile sticker if you have anything that you think is fragile or needs special handling make sure you mention that to the person checking you in and they do put in a fragile like this time i actually brought back a coffee machine from switzerland so i made sure that my bag was covered with fragile all over it and touch wood but everything came back really properly there was no issue at all and um, you know the bag was i was in transit so even with all of that there was no problem at all so make sure that you tell the person to put in the fragile sticker and you should be fine and really with baggage there are ways so some people prefer even having a cover over it you can get ready made covers you get really nice uh, stretchable uh, nice looking covers as well like bag they are called back clothes yeah back clothes yeah. or you know just change your bag after 3 4 years you will get bored of it anyways and a new bag is worth it so yeah, yeah i think the the warranty for most of the bigger brands like american tourist or samsonite you know national geographic also has a bag brand so like a lot of them are 5 years and some of them even have like 7 to 10 year warranty so a bag is going to last so investing in one is is actually is actually great and you know now nowadays like i recently bought two bags one was the medium sized one and one was the large one rooms have become smaller right if you're going to a super popular city and you want to stay in the city center you don't want to spend a lot so you're going to spend uh, not so much and get a smaller room but the moment you get go into the smaller room there is the bag rack or you know baggage table or bag table that is there and opening a bag which opens okay. both sides it doesn't fit on that bag bag rack right so then there's this new type of bag where only the top flap opens so you have a deep bag which means of course you have to organize stuff in the right way and of course we'll move on to the organization of your bag in some time but those bags just open the top flap so at least the back can fit and i think that was something that was really needed so i'm going to try this on the next trip i'm going to go to europe in june So let's see how that goes. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Neil. So earlier I used to have bags that opened like flat out, and once I was in London and I had a single room. So, and sometimes they really the single room is 
is hardly even enough for one person. It was a very good hotel, but the single room was very small and there was no way I could open my bag. So I had to put it on the bed every time, open it and then take the clothes and out. So yes, I've also moved on to bags that with one flap open. You really need to be organized because you need to dig into your luggage. But uh, yeah, it, it works much better. And you know, imagine a family, even if there are two or three people, which means three suitcases in one room, it can get quite, um, quite, tight so yeah that's but then cool. like see if if someone's starting out someone who doesn't have bags at all mm-hmm. which is that one bag that you have to get first you think because i may differ with you on this point so which I bag should a i medium know? sized four uh, wheel strolly would be the best thing that you can invest in because even if it's a smaller trip you have a little more room even if it's a bigger trip you can still manage with the medium size and for me if you had to buy only one bag i would do that my next bag would be something that I would carry on the airport because even on the airport, you have to walk a lot. And often, um, at least for like me, I need to carry my laptop when I'm going and just carrying it on my backpack, it can get a little heavy. So I like to have something with wheels to also carry the backpack, uh, to carry the laptop, sorry. But you know, nowadays you get those bags which have a flap behind. So this trolley then kind of sits nicely on your bigger luggage and then you are still one hand is free all the time. So for me, that is the best combination that works. But uh, yeah, depending on your choice, one medium sized trolley with four wheels that you can check in and either a backpack or your, you know, a duffel bag or, or a small stroller that that would be perfect. You know, with duffel bags, I mean, at the airport, you see like you see photos of Bollywood film stars go traveling somewhere, right? And you often wonder like where are their bags, right? They'll often have just like one small backpack holding a passport, holding a phone, and everyone tries to be cool like them. And that's why the Bollywood uh, stars will or Bollywood celebs will be promoting different bag brands who just have backpacks. And then people don't realize that they have an assistant who has already taken all their bags. Uh, inside the airport and that those bags are not seen anywhere and when we try to take those bags fill it in with the food that we want to carry on a plane everything that we want to take in that cabin bag it gets quite heavy and that's why I have also realized that you know that cabin bag with wheels even when you go past immigration is the best idea possible Charo let's move on to the next one what do you think we should I think, take up? Uh, well, we have a luggage now sorted. Yeah. We have uh, the bags in hand. Uh, now what goes in? So yeah. let's come to the most important point and that is the clothing because uh, often the question is how much and what? What do we take and how much do we take? Because typically I think most holidays are at least a week. Let's talk of the longer holidays. I mean, four days, we all know what to do. But from seven days to about 15 days is what the holidays would stretch to. So now how many days would, um, how many clothes would you carry? What kind of clothes to carry? Also, if we are traveling in summer or are we traveling in winter or you don't know what the weather is going to be like. Like I remember, um, you know, even people who go to the Northeast come back saying, we experience all three seasons, even sometimes in one day, because the weather can change. Even in Europe, it can change drastically anywhere you are. So nowadays, the weather is unpredictable. You have to be ready for everything. So how much should we take and what should we take? Why don't you start and then I'll add in what I do. I think an apt question to start over here is often like, what are three or four things that you will always have in your bag, whether it's summer or winter? Um, Neil, if you're talking of clothing and the three or four things that I would always carry, I think a scarf for sure, at least Mm -hmm. one scarf, if not more, uh, that is something I don't go out with. One jacket, I mean, other than the essential clothing, right? Um, A jacket that I would take, depending on the weather, it can be a light. Even if it's summer, I would carry at least one light jacket because uh, I even like to have it on the aircraft. You know, the aircraft can sometimes get really cold. So often I will carry a jacket. And yeah, another thing is if I'm carrying a winter jacket too, it's usually on hand. So then the baggage is not heavy. So Mm -hmm. whatever's heaviest. You know, they say, right. They say, right. Like if your bag's too heavy and they are not allowing you to check in, wear as many clothes as you can. 
So mm-hmm. yeah, the winter jacket is something that you should just carry in your hand. Yeah, just carry it in hand. Like same goes with jeans. If you're comfortable with jeans on a flight, just wear it because jeans are heavy, and that really helps. You know, small things help to bring down the weight of your uh, bag quite a bit. So the jacket and the jeans are something that I would uh, go in. And yeah, the third thing is jeans. So one pair of jeans, one jacket, and a scarf. Three pieces of clothing come with me wherever I go. Uh, and of I course, quite, and- yeah. I quite I quite agree because so what I look for is the three things that I'll often carry are sunglasses um a jacket and like just one pair of denims wherever you go yeah. because but speaking of denims if you're going in the snow don't take denims is what I would recommend because I've seen so many people in the snow wearing denims and that does not go well because denims get heavy the moment snow touches uh your denims and they start getting wet and then you will just not have a great experience but now sunil there's summer there's winter right destinations like dubai are thought to be summer destinations but it's always recommended to carry a jacket because if you go to the desert dunes or you just are roaming around on the beach it can get quite windy so how how should one organize their luggage of course you can speak for women i'll i'll speak for men how should one organize their luggage where that that thing is there right like hey for a day i'll take three three dresses or three types of um like clothes because i may need them mm. but once you reach the destination you realize that hey i'm not wearing three different types of clothes in one day i'm just wearing one like a shirt and like pants or like women are wearing just one dress instead of wearing three dresses and at the end of a trip you're like oh there are just these like four or five things that i could have just left at home so how do you decide what to take what not to take and how do you do this like mix and match of clothing and everything yeah neil and the second thing is you want to look good on a holiday too like you want to have some nice uh, memories good photos enjoy it and want to be appropriately dressed wherever we are right so i think uh, like they say the golden rule is keep everything that you want to pack on the bed and then take only half of it or on your table or wherever so you know pull down everything that you think you're going to need and then only pack half of what you uh, actually pulled out and that is really enough so um of course for summer it's a little easier because you don't need as many clothes um the other point there is for summer is that maybe the clothes can get if it's humid the clothes can get sweaty and you may want to kind of uh, change so you may need more but anyways the clothes are thinner lighter and it goes uh, without saying that you can keep uh, take more uh, i would take a few linens and cottons and t-shirts uh, for summer and shorts or whatever else it is that you want to carry um, depending on where you are flip flops for sure so you know if you're going on the beach then a um, cover up or a scarf and there are multiple youtube videos which show you how you can use the same thing in different ways so the scarf can go as a sarong over your swimsuit the scarf can be if it gets cold you can wear it like a scarf itself or you know even wear it like a shrug so you can use the same item again and again in different ways and i think that really is the trick to make that happen for example if you're carrying a shirt and it gets a little chilly wear a t-shirt throw the shirt over and you have the shirt as a jacket so just make sure when you're packing that the colors are slightly coordinated so that you're you're looking good as well on tour when it comes to winter i think layering is the best idea and over and over it's been done so remember that when you're buying clothes for winter because now we have a lot of shops even in india where we can buy winter clothing or if you're abroad very often the chunky knits like knitted sweaters look so good and you're tempted but when you really fold them it occupies half your suitcase and then you have no space for anything else so one good jacket for winter really does quite a bit in that also i would say there are if you keep looking you will find jackets that are reversible so like i have one which is you know like um, a little velvety on one side and then it is for the rain on the other so on in the day or when it's raining you can wear that but if you're going out in the night and want to look a little more dressy then just reverse it and you have you look a little more dressier so so those really work well so invest in a good jacket for winter and layering lots of layering so using thermals really helps because it takes off the cold immediately so definitely i would pack one or two thermals and in that again you get one with full sleeves you get the ones that are sleeveless as well so again depending on what you're wearing have thermals have a t-shirt 
uh, a tight t-shirt and then wear a shirt on top and really you are not affected by winter you're very comfortable because even now neil i was in switzerland like two weeks back it was still winter like winter is moving into spring right now but the sun was so like it was shining so brightly and the weather so pure that after some time I started feeling the heat and it was just easy to, you know, take the jacket off. Then after some time, just, you know, you can just start taking each layer off or keep adding each layer. Now coming to how do you make it look good or how do you, you know, ensure that you, it looks like you're wearing many clothes, but you've only taken a few. So what I typically tend to do is pick a color that's your favorite. So I like blue. So I would always have a blue shirt or a blue top in uh, my clothes and maybe a black one and a white three basic colors that can go with anything and maybe five to six different kinds of scarves or stoles and yes if my mom is going I help her pack so I would pack in like basics um, you know salwar kameezes or tops and then give her a lot of dupattas to go on that same uh, dress so that you can wear the same thing three times maybe at least in a tour and it still looks like you're wearing something else because you're pairing it with a different stole, a different scarf, a different dupatta. And in the photos, no one knows. And actually, honestly, no one cares. It's up to us as to how we look and what we do. And yeah, so for a good seven, eight day trip, you can you can do it with three, three dresses. That's it. And maybe one good dress or a skirt or something to change for the evening. Or if you're going to somewhere where there's a casino or you're, you, or you're, on, you're on a cruise or something else, then, then carry one dress. And the same thing goes, accessories and scarves can really change your look. So I would do that. So, you know, I'm going to pick up on a number of things that you've mentioned over there. One, yes, I agree that sweaters take up the, the most space in your bag. And as good as they look, it, it doesn't make sense carrying more than one or two. You mentioned jackets. And I've seen many travelers from India when they are going to a destination which is cold they tend to take a leather jacket. Now, leather jackets, I would classify them into two types. One other super amazing luxury leather jackets where like, you know, I'll have to like sell my phone to buy a leather jacket or something like that. Now, those will keep you warm. But if you've bought a cheap leather jacket, that's not going to keep you warm because maybe that leather is synthetic leather or that's like not like not like natural leather. And if it's not that, then you are going to feel cold. So people often like have this misconception that leather jackets are always going to keep you warm. And I don't think that is uh, something that is true. So keep that in mind. Another thing is people often tend to pack so many things thinking that, okay, if I wear a denim once, I need to put it for a wash, which means if someone's going for a seven day trip, you have seven denims or seven trousers in that bag. And if you're traveling, my thing is don't do that. And I really learned this when I went backpacking in Vietnam, because while backpacking, I just had a backpack and nothing else, right? I did not take a stroller bag, nothing, just backpack. And one denim, of course, we put it for a wash twice over a 15 day trip. Like you just find washing machines and then like super cheap, put, put it for a wash, all good. But one pair of denims lasted me a full 15 days, two washes. So you can reuse denims. In, of course, destinations where it's hot, like I was in Seychelles right now, you could probably just wear a t-shirt and trousers once because you're sweating all the time. But colder places, you can just keep reusing clothes, right? Sweaters can be reused, all of that. So that really saves up on a lot of the luggage that uh, otherwise people would carry. My suggestion always is that carry one dress or one set of clothes less than what you are traveling traveling for because then you might be able to shop for something at that destination so of course research about the shopping you may go to Maldives thinking that I'm going to shop in the Maldives but you're not going to shop in the Maldives because you're stuck in one hotel but I often like to do that because then I can buy a t-shirt buy a shirt and that's always something that really works but those were some of the points that I had when it comes to clothes and how you stack up clothes in a bag I, I wanted to ask you about one, how do you organize your suitcase? Yeah. Do you fold? Do you roll clothes and all of that? And then you, I wanted to move to shoes. Yeah, Neil. So uh, one more point with winter is that if you really have a good pair of socks, 
a good hat or a cap like a woolen cap or something and a scarf it takes care of the winter you know we think we need very heavy jackets but if your head is covered and your feet are covered and your neck is covered then you don't feel the winter so much and yes gloves if you want to and honestly these things don't take so much space so you know typically luggage has uh, even if it's one flap it has one smaller net or a compartment and all of this can easily fit there so that kind of takes care of the winter coming to how to organize the bag um so for me it kind of changes depending on if i'm going for a business trip or i'm going really for a holiday or on the type of clothes so i found that the jersey type of clothes which are t-shirts and the other things they really go well when they are rolled and recently i've started using packing cubes so you get a set of cubes for packing which are like a set of three uh, packing cubes so depending on the size and they work really well so you can have the smallest one for your undergarments or whatever then the middle size for your t-shirts and other things and the big ones can be either for shirts or for your trousers so if you put in shirts with collared shirts then i don't roll them i lay them flat one on top of the other and alternate them so that it kind of stays well and it doesn't move in the packing cube then it doesn't move in your luggage so sometimes the bags are not totally full if your bag is half empty packing cubes really help because then the clothes inside are not moving and then you don't have to iron them when you're going back especially if you have even one meeting or you're carrying something that can get uh, wrinkled you know um, or you have a business meeting where With do you the get other, these where do you get these packing cubes you get them everywhere you get them on amazon you get them when you're traveling um, i think i had picked them up in the us but they are easily available on amazon and the others you just have to search for packing cubes or packing uh, boxes and you can see like a set of 3 and they actually have one feature a lot of them and mine too where once you put your clothes in it has one more zipper and it kind of you know compresses the bag so you have more space it kind of flattens it out so it's like a little trick that you can use to put everything in and then use this zipper to close it even tighter so then you can just pull out the packing cube and you're done and it works for me because when i'm coming back i change completely and whatever clothes i've used or the ones to wash then go into one of the cubes and then you can just remove that part when you come home and it's just easy to unpack as well so i do that with the t-shirts i generally roll them and lay them one after the other and then you can really take a lot more and uh, it helps because nothing wrinkles shorts i don't like to roll them or maybe i don't know how to roll them but i prefer laying them flat and that really works um over the years i've realized that i have like the same area in my bag that goes for the toiletry pouch the same places so even the like the places in my luggage are fixed where the shoes go another thing i like to do since we are talking of we'll speak about shoes but socks and other small um, you know items you can stuff it inside the shoes with the uh, things so that the shoes don't lose their shape as well and then you don't have to search for where are the socks in my baggage and that's kind of easy to put that in as well so sunita now speaking of shoes right what is the right quantity of shoes to take hmm. you're asking a woman right quantity of shoes if i could i'd fill my entire bag with shoes neel but um, okay what i've realized is depending on if you're okay with open shoes or closed shoes but wear your most comfortable shoes on the airport because you will be walking a lot so wherever we go you're walking a lot so wear the pair that you're really comfortable in i like closed shoes some others and i think a lot of elders prefer open shoes or chappals so if you're comfortable that's fine but just stick to whatever you're comfortable again the same rule my heaviest shoes usually i wear them and i go but uh, one thing i discovered was when i was going in winter to london and i had the big boots you know that come right up to the knee the knee boots and i realized what a pain it was at security to take those boots off and cross because every time i walk through the the you know alarm would go off and he would say take your shoes off and come and it was a disaster to remove take those boots off and wear so if you're carrying boots you want to carry boots i would say take you know a few clothes less but put them in your luggage and then wear them once you're in europe it makes a lot of sense to do that um so yeah one pair of comfortable shoes i think about two or three three is the maximum i think that you should take because you don't need more than that i usually carry one pair of uh, slippers or um, you know flip flops but 
nice ones which kind of look good even if you're when you're outside so even sometimes in in cold weather you want to just go down for breakfast but don't want to wear your clothes shoes it's nice to have something to slip into and quickly go down and come uh, so i would carry one of those one of my um, sneakers or kids or whatever and one slightly formal you know it can be flat it can be whatever so you can really then use these three and change from any kind of dress and you're fine so i think for me i would carry at least three so again if you're going hiking or trekking then you need yeah. waterproof and other shoes so like i have this rule of three or four like three four which is four only if there's a black tie event which yeah. means the formal shoes or you're going for an exhibition then the formal shoes come in handy slippers or slip-ons so that you can go for breakfast you go into the beach you can use them sport shoes always because um it's just that you might have a great hiking or trekking trail in the place that you are so i often believe in that and you can like train at the hotel that you are and the third one is sneakers so sneakers you can wear anywhere and pick sneakers which would allow you to get into fancy restaurants or fancy clubs also because otherwise you might pick sneakers which are just like regular sneakers that you'll wear around the city that might not get you into the fancy restaurant so like you'll have to balance it out but it's always good to have those and i've noticed that if you get black sneakers they tend to work at these fancy places people don't stop you but you have like uh, colorful sneakers there are some restaurants which may be or which may just stop you and you have to remember that if you're going for any theater shows or in vegas in london anywhere then you often need formal shoes so it's that three or four rule three for a regular trip for if there's a black tie event or something then uh, i'll often try to carry those suggestion and i i quite agree that uh that putting stuffing socks into the shoe helps maintain the shape of the shoe and that's quite important because otherwise if your shape is just gone or new sneakers have creases or something and once you reach the destination doesn't really help now of course we we are running out of time slowly and steadily but we still have a lot to cover but i have one quick question sunila where you know we go to a hotel there are all these cupboards there are hangers there's everything should you unpack your entire bag or what what is the rule that you follow when you reach a hotel because i just feel that's dead space in a room <laughs> true uh, good point neil but before we go there just going back to the shoes very quickly make sure you bought the shoes way ahead of your trip don't buy it one day before going on the holiday you will be you know you you'll suffer with a shoe bite so make sure you break into your shoes at least 2 3 weeks or 2 weeks minimum 2 weeks before you go on the trip get your shoes get used to them and then go on the trip yes very good point about the wardrobes and i've often wondered that you know if they give the wardrobes in the room means we have to use them right my my whole mantra always is if this is there i should be using it why am i not using it and i just find it um, it very tiring to kind of unpack the whole thing and then i'm always worried that i'm going to forget something there while coming but what i realized is that uh, if you're staying one night or two nights don't unpack your you know at least for me that works well you can stick to keeping clothes in your suitcase but if you're staying longer at a place like anything from 3 nights up i find that giving that 10 minutes as soon as you check in to really unpack and fill the wardrobe bin it makes a lot of difference so it saves you a lot of time in the morning it also keeps your clothes really well so you know clothes that do you're worried about um, the ironing on the clothes you can hang them up it also air dries the clothes and kind of keeps them fresh longer and then there are different uh, drawers kept there or if you are a family then you can even divide the wardrobe and have your own spaces in there and then it's very easy and quick to get ready every day because you want to maximize your time uh, at your destination outside and sightseeing and not in the hotel so i found that if i'm staying for three nights and up or if i have a business event or if i have some other like a casino event or other things to go to where you're carrying a dress you're carrying some nice clothes which you're worried about hang them up use the drawers use everything and it's very easy and quick to get ready on to and i've start kind of started doing that recently i would never unpack earlier because i said it's just easier but then the luggage like you said 
our bags are getting smaller we are carrying more things and it just becomes this one big mess where you don't know where is what in spite of however organized you are so yeah if it's one or two nights don't unpack but more than that try unpacking at your hotel next and maybe you'll have a better holiday great chalo let's come to toiletries and like for women cosmetics right how how much to take how do you organize it and like what's a good way of organizing all of this because so i've seen people i've literally seen people brushes in one side of the bag like your toothpaste is in another side of the bag and all of that and people don't invest in a good toiletries kit and after i invested in one it just felt good because everything was in one place yeah neel there are many 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 different types of kits that you can take there are some which actually have a hook and you can hang it wherever you are i find that really quite useful that you don't have to you know you can just go in it opens out and you can hang it in the bathroom or with me with the toiletries i like to spread them out one side each uh, a place but even before that what to take and what not to take i would say don't take the big sizes that we get in our shops take travel sizes so for your shampoo conditioner most of the hotels would have those but uh, i prefer my own so if you are like me and you want to take your own but what i do is you know again amazon and the other things a lot of online shops decathlon all these travel goods and sport shops have a lot of these packs that you can buy you also have empty bottles like even body shop or so many other places have those empty bottles and you can actually fill in how much ever you want for the trip so it doesn't add to the luggage because the one thing if that really makes a difference in the weight of your bag is the toiletries the toiletry kit often is so heavy that um, you know if you just take that off and you'll be fine within your uh, within your baggage allowance so take smaller sizes and i found that when i travel on the airports you often get a lot of these travel sizes so i pick those up that makes my life easier to travel whenever i go or i pick up the empty bottles and i refill them without fail every time i come in i've often found you don't need everything that you do at home like you may have a morning routine evening routine at home you don't need to take all of that one thing can act for multiple reasons so you actually have a small like vaseline you have a small uh, you know balm called an balm for all reasons and everything so even if you have a small cut you have a sore you know it, it's cold and you have a cold sore you have chapped lips the one thing can work for everything so you don't need to carry five different things the one small even just a small pack of vaseline is good for a lot of things so similarly moisturizer vaseline these are shampoo conditioner if you want yes toothbrush of course and a smaller size of the toothpaste you don't have to take the biggest size available take smaller ones and um, you are good to go so that really cuts down i've even checked the weight of the packing cube like the you know not not the packing cube i mean the toiletry kit so i found that if you go to the ones that are uh, for mountaineering or trekking they have really light material and i've i've now found one that is very light so go to a trekking shop or a hiking shop and you'll find a toiletry kit that is made in the lightest material because like you said backpacking you have to carry everything on your own and that is good because it lets me carry more of the stuff that i can take with me so that is definitely one thing i would do and um, you know one more thing i do is when i come back home this luggage travel kit i clean it immediately i refill it and it goes into one luggage drawer so i actually have like a a travel drawer at home and everything that i have to travel always goes there like your uh, adapters and plugs and the other things that you need everything goes there so every time i have to pack i only have to open one drawer and everything is at hand and it really saves a lot of time otherwise you're searching for things and spending too much time packing you know i'm going to digress here and ask you how many countries are you at right now <laughs> I didn't count deal, but I think it's more than seventy-five for sure. I I've been repeating the countries now, so now once travel has started, I will move on my journey towards the hundred countries soon. I guess when you do so many countries, you have a luggage drawer and you are always prepared to hop onto a flight. But yep, I agree with most of the points that um you have, you have said. Would like to add one or two things where. um the i i strongly suggest what you suggested that those travel sizes are the best because now with different airports having different rules and covid has ensured that rules have um, you know increased so always try to have more uh, 
like more stuff, but in smaller sizes, less than 100 ml is something that becomes super critical. Remember that if you have nail cutters or something in your toiletries kit, sometimes, sometimes security may just stop you and may not let you take the nail cutter, any sharp items, any razors, you may not be able to do that. So keep, just keep that in mind. So that, that is quite essential. So Sunila, we've covered a lot. We've covered luggage. We've covered how to fold, how to organize, whether in a hotel, you should have like a luggage or a bag that opens both ways or just the top flap opens. We've covered a fair, fair bit. Now, there's often things about what is a checklist or where can I get a good checklist? And everyone who travels with Veena World gets a checklist from our team as to what you should pack, what the weather is like in that destination and all that. What is your checklist? How do you create a checklist? Because different destinations require different things. And of, of course, over the last 30 minutes, you've thrown light on a lot of things and I've added to some of the pointers. But what, what is a good checklist to have? Neil, checklists can be really different for different people. So I would say um, you can even search online. There are lots of travel checklists that you can find and then spend some time in personalizing it because there may be some things that you always need or you tend to forget. Like, you know, I, I've realized I tend to forget the adapters for phones or, you know, the multi adapter that you need. So make sure you have that. The way I do it, it and like you mentioned with Veena Word, we always give a checklist and you can add a few points to that. What I like to do is keep my, keep my checklist on my phone so that every time I go, it's in my notes and then I can just start ticking off. I just open the checklist and start packing because otherwise you don't know where to go and what to stop. Categorize it in your checklist. So, you know, maybe you have one thing for, like we discussed, clothes, toiletries, essentials, um, you know, and um, other things, accessories that you want to carry, um, maybe some jewelry or costume jewelry or something like uh, that goes in. It depends on what you like or like for the guys equally, maybe you have your, again, the toiletry checklist can differ, but I think the basics remain the same. So clothing, shoes, accessories and uh, toiletries, these things kind of would cover pretty much everything that you want to do. Um, what I've realized is I, yes, one more item that I always forget and we didn't touch upon that is a swimsuit. And we often think that you would need swimwear only for summer. It's not like that. You need a swimwear wherever you go, because very often you may find time on a holiday to come back, relax. And even if it's cold outside, your hotel could have a heated pool and you could go in and enjoy for some time. Or if there's a sauna or something else, you may end up needing a swimsuit anywhere. And I found that, yeah, if you're the type of person who's swimming a lot or has something, you have an extra one, just keep it in your luggage all the time so that you never forget it. So I, I find that doing that also often helps. For me, swimsuit, hat and sunglasses are three things that I never leave without. So, you know, depending on how much you have, if you have extras, just store them in your luggage and it's easy. The checklist, another good way to keep it is to really print it out and stick it inside your suitcase itself so that you will Super never... idea. Super idea. I never thought of that. You know, if you if you are going somewhere because you may have a piece of paper or if you don't have your phone or your phone is not charged or you deleted it by mistake, just print it, stick it on the inside of your suitcase. So every time you open your suitcase, you have the checklist there and then it's just super simple to keep packing according to that if you want to be even better keep like a standard checklist we mentioned the items and then have winter summer just below it and then you'll be sorted for everything that you do so i think that would be one of the best ways to do it um, you know research a little spend a little time and personalize your checklist and then you don't have to worry ever again about packing um you know and forgetting something like going somewhere and saying oh wow i wish i had this this is nice i could have enjoyed if uh, if i had my swimsuit here and i've learned that by forgetting it not once but more than once so uh, that's how i've you know it's always it's also a good idea to carry multiple swimsuits because photos on a beach photos in a pool infinity pool every day wearing the same swimsuit no you don't want to do that right so always carry multiple swimsuits but you know one more thing after every trip, you know, you think about the memories, you're posting everything on Instagram. It's always good to go back to the checklist and keep updating it. Because That's like, see, you've told us so much over the last 30 minutes, you've been traveling so much. And because you've been traveling so much, you have learned that, okay, I faced this issue over here. I'm not going to face that again. 
so that's why it's always good to uh, like keep updating that checklist and you know right. and along with your swimsuit carry two three different types of sunglasses because that yeah. also changes your look really immediately you feel nice and it doesn't take any space so you know always things that don't take space carry in multiples you know swimsuit like always carry a swimsuit because we've jumped into the waters of antarctica also <laughs> so yes. you, you don't know where like it's not necessary that if a place is cold you are not going to get to swim because like iceland is cold but they have the thermal baths there exactly. new zealand gets cold new zealand has like what the geysers or something like that out in queenstown if i'm not wrong so like that's it you think we've missed out anything sunila i think we've covered most of it and uh, neil it, it always keeps changing there are going to be different things just one more point in the checklist for now at least should be your vaccination certificate your double vaccination or a booster required depending on wherever you're traveling because those are the conditions now like if you're traveling to africa you would probably need a yellow fever vaccination so just add vaccinations and certificates in that and yes yes your passport your uh, air ticket your uh, boarding pass and currency if you're carrying any foreign currency or your credit card so those go without saying i mean you have to carry them um so yes don't forget vaccination certificates along you carry most of us have it on phone most of us have it of course on the apps and that is uh, okay as well you don't really need a print out a lot of people think you always need a print out you don't uh, what is important is that you have to have the qr code on your vaccination certificate because that is being scanned and right now i did a trip to switzerland and italy and it, yes they did open it out to check the qr code so make sure that that's legible and and you're okay awesome so i think this is going to be a contender for one of the longest travel explore celebrate life episodes but that's also because packing is such an important thing it can make or break your trip and that's why we decided to spend so much time on it thanks a lot sunila thank you everyone for tuning in on youtube spotify apple podcast or wherever you listen to your podcast or watch this video thanks a lot and as we always say keep traveling and become a smart traveler thanks a lot for tuning in to travel explore celebrate life sunila see you next week bye bye